I just got home from work a little bit ago. So what's everybody doing? I see my Geo. Yeah, you do, because it's got a really good factory edge. So I don't know who all is going to show up. We'll see. I've been home from work for about 35, 45 minutes. So we're going to talk about factory edges, talk about handle material, and stuff like that until I get ton tired until I get tired of prattling on and and I'm done talking to you guys because I don't know I just got I'm not getting I'm I have to work overtime this week because I'm the only nights guy so um, let me get this set up here let me see here cancel that I want to see here so if we don't get a bunch if we don't get some more people showing up here before too long I'm just going to end it. But yeah, basically, we're going to talk about factory edges. We're going to talk about handle materials, plus and minuses. There's not much to talk about when it comes to factory edges. Some some countries, some companies do them well, and then there's everybody else. So there's a lot of companies that don't do it very well. So I do have a couple examples of some really, really good ones. So let's see who gets here. What do you guys, what's everybody got in their pockets today? I'll show you what I have in my pocket. Well, actually, I took it out so we can talk about it, but I'm carrying what has become, I believe this may be knife of the year. This could have taken my knife of the year, uh, the Microtech Amphibian. There, there's another one. There's another one that came in that may get knife of the year. You want to talk about a company that gets factory edges that are just ridiculous. Microtech. Never had a, I've never had a dull Microtech from factory. So let's see. There's a handful of people here. Let's turn this around. I'll get the lights turned on. Let me turn this around. And we'll, how's the audio, by the way? I don't know if I got the microphone hooked up properly. I don't, I don't 100% know for certain if I have the microphone hooked up properly. And I don't really know if I cleaned the lens. So, like I said, let me know if the audio is good. So, let me grab my, my wipey lens rag thingy. There we go. So now let's turn this around. We're gonna look at we're gonna look at some some stuff. I got oh, my reading glasses too. So there we go. There we go. Um, so the big thing, factory edges. I'm gonna tell you guys right now. Factory edges usually aren't great, um, and there's a couple of reasons for it. A lot of times they got a burr. Um, a lot of companies overheat their edge and things like that. And where is everyone going? If if no one's gonna be here, I'm gonna leave. Um, I do have a couple examples of some good factory edges. This is a factory edge from, El it's on some Elmax by Ace, the giant mouse brand. Uh, their factory edges are always really, really good. Nice and toothy. They do a, they do a pretty good job keeping it consistent. Um, you can see uh, if I can get it to focus. I had somebody who's like, well, it's just, it, I hate, I can't watch your videos. You're always fingering and touching the blade. And I'm like, well, there's a couple reasons for that. It, when, you, when you have movement behind the blade and close to it, it keeps it in focus. So, um, and if you don't like watching me touch the blade, then probably not the channel for you. Um, but it helps keep it in focus. It's like, it's like uh, Scab doing his tap in the blade thing to keep it in focus. It, it gets motion in the area you want some focus. So, um, yeah, I've never had one of these giant mouse brand the Ace uh, knives, um, you know, giant, giant mouse ace knives i've never had one come dull they've got really really good factory edges uh i have had a lot of reats now this doesn't have a factory edge anymore uh, i've had a lot of reats that come with uh, really really good factory edges reats are historically really really sharp out of the box As a matter of fact this one has one edge that still has the factory yeah this still has a factory edge on it reat does a really good job with their factory edges um, they're not too coarse. They keep them nice and that they, they have a tendency to respond to a strop pretty well for a while. Now, eventually you are going to have to resharpen that edge. Um, so it's, it's nighttime for me. I'm, uh, currently enjoying an adult beverage at nine o'clock in the morning, but I'm not waiting until, you know, if I wait too long, I got to go to work tonight. So, um, the, one of the, like I said, the other, company that I that I was going to mention and I just had it Microtech Microtech always does a really good job with their factory edges so does we knife company 
So I'd have to say it's We Knife Company, Riat, Microtech, uh, not Benchmade. Benchmade usually has some horrible edges. Spyderco has some inconsistency with their edges, but they're usually really sharp. This is probably one of the sharpest knives out of box. Matter of fact, I got myself with it uh, yesterday at work cutting some, uh, cutting a zip tie, and it, it, it did uh, it went way it went through way faster than I expected it to. So. This one, um, probably sharpest knife out of box I've had in a very long time. Um, we Knife Company, they do a really good job with their factory edges. And uh, this one has been resharpened, but that's only because, well, I did use this knife and I dulled it. So um, companies that don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah this. Uh, the Beyond EDC knife stuff, which, by the way, you can get for 40% off if you use my coupon code, crazy sharp, all one word. Go pick one of these up. This is that Geo by uh, Bladed Ginger. They're, the guy here, Bladed Ginger, designed this. Um, this is a nice, nice design. The, the stuff that I got in from Beyond EDC all had really, really good factory edges, uh, this one included. So if you get a good factory edge, uh, QSP is another company that does pretty good factory edges. QSP, um, QSP does a really good job with theirs. This is needing sharpened, but it's got a fairly decent factory edge on it that I've, I've tried to maintain. And then this is that best Techman good boy that I got for free, which there's a video about this going up on Sunday. Um, I got this one for free and it came with an, inc with an excellent uh, factory edge on this D2. Um, yeah, it's, uh, this is really, yeah, nothing, nothing's wanting to focus. Um, so those ones are all pretty good. Now there are, there are companies, I'm gonna tell you right now, there's companies that, don't do such a great job with their edges. Uh, Benchmade, always horrible. Um, Benchmade, it's not just that they're horrible, they're inconsistent from side to side. Spyderco can be that way. I mean, this came really sharp, but it definitely did have, if you watch my initial unboxing video and first sharpening and everything, this definitely had an inconsistent asymmetrical grind from side to side. It still sort of does at the very tip. You can see, and this is, this is probably needing sharpened as well but yeah factory edges from a lot of companies aren't great spyderco is hit or miss usually miss um bench made really really bad case never any good their edges have always got a big burr and then the elephant in the room every time i've ever gotten a cold steel the first thing i ever did was uh <laughs> the first thing i i have ever the first thing i do every time i get a cold steel is I resharpen it because their edges are just literally the worst. So this is Cold Steel Voyager. You can see here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Not just that the sharpening's not good. I mean, they're sharp, but they're really inconsistent. They usually have a bad burr that it only stays sharp for a little bit. This has still got, even for all the sharpening I've done, has still got a low spot here where this edge was inconsistent. And you can see it's on both sides. Uh, the factory edge on this, that is such a low spot. And then I believe one of these sides still has, yeah, you can see how this is inconsistent from side to side where it's like hollowed out in here. Um, so I don't have, uh, I don't have an opinion on those because I don't either, I don't own either one of those stones, Timothy. Um, I, it's not that I, I don't want to give you info. I just don't have any empirical data to base it on, I've never used them. Um, but yeah, can you see? Even for all the sharpening I did, look at how bad that edge is. I mean, it's still like, even all the material I removed on this, it's still barely apexed there. I mean, I mean, it's apex, but there's just barely any material that even got removed on this. I think this one is one of the ones that came with the worst factory edge. I've ever had. Every once in a while, you'll get you'll get one that has a good factory edge. I believe it's over here still. I have a uh, an old school Cold Steel Pendleton Custom Classic based on the Pendleton Hunter, and this one came with a really really good factory edge. But that is a very rare occurrence with the with the Cold Steel brand. I, I've very rarely have. This is one of the only Cold Steel knives I've ever owned. Actually, this is the only one 
that still has its factory edge. It's the only one I've ever owned that I didn't just immediately put it on a sharpening. I think this one was, if I remember right, this one was really bad when my dad bought it for me as well. And even as many years as I've had this, you can still see the inconsistencies in the edge on this. So the this is, it's just not great how they do that. It's It just really isn't. Uh, Olamic always has pretty good edges, uh, but they're they're more along the lines of a kind of get, you're getting into something that's more like almost custom. And I almost say that about Microtech. I see how they do it. Their knives are still, I, if they're doing it the same way I've always seen it, um, they're still grinding these knives by hand. These knives are still ground by hand. And you'll get some inconsistencies. Mine has a little bit of a low spot on the swedge back here. Um, but the, the blade itself is ground real, real well. And there's a little bit of a low spot, like right in where my thumb is at, that you can almost see where the blade looks like. It, it looks like the swedge is kind of curved. I'm not going to complain on a hand ground knife, but the part that's important, which is this edge area, is done really, really well. <laughs> All Amics should for their price point. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, I did, this was a knife, this knife was a gift to me. And then I refinished the blade. I did the stone wash that's on this. It had a, a, a black wash, like an acid wash on it. And I just stone washed it off um, and then resharpened it. So this one did have a really good factory edge on it. And their heat treat's always good, which is another bonus when you're talking about factory edges. What if, what do you guys, what's the worst ones? Like I, I said, Case typically has some absolutely horrible factory edges. Case does, um, I'm not gonna lie, Best Tech does a good job when they do it a good job, but when they don't, it's really, really bad. Um, I just, I think there's just some companies that just don't really give a flying, well, you know the word, about their factory edges and it kind of shows. And the one that just surprises me every time is consistently fucked up are the Spydercos that are made in Golden, Colorado. Yeah, that's true. Sog never has a good edge either. But then again, they use garbage steel. So it, it, it's a combination of both. Um, the Golden, Colorado Spydercos are consistently bad. And I mean, when I say consistently bad, they're all going to have the same problem. On the uh, pocket, pocket uh, clip side, you're going to have a low spot back here. Can you see it? There's still a low spot on this one back at the heel. And there's probably, yeah. Oh, and I'm sorry, I got it backwards. A show scale side. Um, always a real bad low spot here. And then on the clip side, there's a low spot here. So it's almost like the blade is canted and it causes, it, it's like it's canted, like they put it in and they grind it this way and it's got a low spot there. And then that low spot translates to a, a an inconsistent edge at the tip of the other. And I mean, it's every one of the Golden Colorado ones I get. You got lucky with your powder coated your Jimbo. It's still factory and it's really good. Is it Golden Colorado Spider Coat or is it um, Seki City? Because the stuff that's made in Second C Seki City usually has got really, really good edges. Um, so I'm, I'm answering a question. Bladed Ginger says he got lucky with his powder coated you know, Jimbo. So um, I've, I've had really good consistent edges from the ones that are made in, okay, Golden Colorado. Well, maybe they fixed it. Maybe enough people complained about it. Um, maybe they stopped just treating it like Cold Steel has treated their um, sheaths that dull your knife every time you pull it in and out, the, the uh, Secure X, um, that they've said, no, it doesn't affect it. And everybody I know says the same thing, that it, it just, every time you pull a knife out of a Secure X sheath, it's dull. It's sharp when it goes in. It's dull when it comes out. My daughter just came home. Chunk, no. The dog, the dog went out to greet my daughter. Um, so, yeah, that's enough about edges. So, you guys got? Do you guys have any horror stories about edges? What's, what's in your opinion? What, who has the worst, the worst edges? I'm going back through. Someone watched over six hours of Smoky Mountain. Smoky Mountain Knife Work stream with nothing but video. Who who has, in you guys' opinion, the worst edges? Um, just, just, just asking. I like I said. I think. I think that React, as far as production wise, 
has some of the best. This was done by Riet. Now I did resharpen this because I dropped it and had to resharpen it. But these were done by Riet. And I remember this being ridiculously, ridiculously sharp. Lost the tip of my finger while working in sharpening at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Still have an indent there. Yeah, I've cut myself so many times. So, let's see. Now let's talk about handle material. I think this is going to be a quick one. I don't think it's going to be a full hour. I'm tired. Um, there's a lot of different handle materials out there. and There's a lot of different variations on the handle material that you will get. Um, uh, let me grab this other one so I can throw it in here. So this is, this is my Carta. My Carta is my personal favorite. And of course, they're going to fly an airplane over while I'm trying to do a live feed. So um, my Carta is personally my favorite of the handle. What are they doing? Boker has given you some bad edges at times. Yeah, but then again, Boker just gives you bad knives. Um, yeah, no, yes, they do. Um, micarta. Micarta is my personal favorite. It, it's, there's a lot of different ways to do micarta. My personal favorite is this coarser micarta. It's, it's really easy to hold on to. Um, it's pretty oil resistant. Uh, they found you. I said it earlier, the worst, cold steel. Yeah, cold steel typically is bad. I like, um, I like this kind of like burlap canvas micarta. It's a little bit more coarse. It's got a really nice look to it. It's still impregnable. You don't have to worry about what you get on it. It's still, are my hands clean? Yeah, they should be. Um, so, you know, when you get, when you get the micarta in hand, it usually feels really good. Uh, like a good micarta like this, it's nice and grippy. It's not overly polished and, and it, it, it stays, it stays nice in your hand. And then the other thing about micarta that you get is, as you can see on this one, you're starting to see, I cleaned it up for a video, but you're starting to see where the hand oils, um, will cause a patina. And you, I mean, you can always, if you don't like it, you can always wash that back off with just a little bit of soapy water and a rag but it gives it its own look that's gonna be really particular to you. You'll have spots that shine up where you, how you carry it and how it wears in your pocket. And this is what, this is what actually, this is more akin to what this looked like before I carried it a, uh, a lot after I cleaned it up the last time. Um, I actually cleaned this up because it's not my knife, but my card is really cool. The problem with a lot of the micarta that you see is like, this is my carta. And it's just been polished to the point where for as much as I love this knife, this is that Pendleton Custom Classic by Cold Steel. They did a really good job on it. It's really attractive. But as far as for what I want, that's too slick. You lose any of the benefit of the handle material when it's that slick. It is attractive. I dig it. I like the way it looks and, uh, and everything. But you really can go too far. Here's the other one that I was going to say. This, so this is black micarta as well on this one. And it, when you polish it that much, you lose, you lose a lot of the grip that you get on micarta. Like this is micarta and this is great. I love this. This is a, a two color micarta that's then been machined. Uh, they didn't go crazy on polishing it. So it's, even though it's a finer, uh, micarta material, you still have, um, it's still a little bit smoother, finer material that they use, but you still have the grippiness because of the fluting and, and all of that. But then you get that attractive look um, of having that two layer micarta. I, I really like this a lot, um, the way it looks and it's still really functional. Oop, sorry. Um, but yeah, you can, you can, you can definitely polish micarta too much. So what's up, Mark? Oh, I keep, sorry guys, I'm, I'm not a hundred, I'm really tired. I, I have to work, uh, I have to work an extra day this week because I'm the only nights guy right now at work. Um, so you have my Carta, like I said, it's my, it's my personal favorite, um, as far as like functionality and the way it feels, as far as the way it looks, it's kind of a tie for me for favorites, um, between carbon fiber and some of the really good carbon fibers that they've got now with the colors added in or something like this. It's a really nicely milled carbon fiber, which kind of adds to the, the grip and texture on a knife when you do the carbon fiber and you mill it really well. It gives you that tactile feel 
Um, but the nice thing is about carbon fiber is when you're using carbon fiber, the weight reduction that you get, the strength that you get in it with the weight reduction that it just being carbon fiber gets you is incredible. This, this knife should not be as light as it is. It is a full integral with carbon fiber overlays that have been milled in and it just makes this knife absolutely the lightest integral. Life. This is not even four ounces. This is under four ounces. I think it's 3.8 ounces for a full integral. And it's not a small knife. It's coming in on the mat. You're looking at just add an eight inch knife on this. And so that's one of the benefits you get from carbon fiber. Plus it's really, really attractive. Carbon fiber is a very good look um, as far as material. And then just, then you've got some other materials. Now I have a knife here before we get into the, the metals, but we'll finish up with the synthetics. G10, G10 is another really good one. It's along the lines of micarta, uh, but it's fiberglass. So it's, it's really strong. So it's fiberglass and resin. So you get kind of the benefits that you get from micarta. And a lot of times it's textured. So it's textured really well and you'll get it in several different textures. Like this is a heavily textured G10 which gets you really good grip. The difference between this and the micarta is, micarta is a natural fiber and fiberglass isn't. The micarta will have a tendency when it gets wet, even though it's, it's impregnated with resin, it's still the fibers that are exposed will expand a little bit. If you get moisture on it, they'll absorb some moisture and you get a little bit of grippiness. Um, let me see if I can demonstrate that. So you've got, this is just water and you can put it on here and you can see that the micarta actually darkens up because it's just those surface, those surface layers, those surface fibers that are exposed will absorb a little bit of moisture and they swell up ever so slightly. It doesn't, it doesn't get all the way down into the material, but just that surface layer becomes a little bit grippier. So if you got wet hands, the micarta works really well. Uh, and you can see as you do that, that it just, kind of expands. Um, well, I clean my, because I will, I, you got to remember, like I use them for videos so that I want them to be clean. I don't want them to look like they've been sitting under a car in a garage for a month. Um, so when you, uh, when you're, when you, if you're going to be doing something where you might have wet hands, my cart is a really, really good option. It's oil impregnable and stuff like that. But G10 is the next best because a lot of times it's textured you know, they, they put a texture on it that is still fairly grippy, but it doesn't absorb that moisture. So it doesn't expand at all and it doesn't give you the added benefit. So this, this does from time to time start looking like that. The more I, I carry this knife a lot. Um, but you know, you got G10 and sometimes G10 can be done. This is G10 as well. Uh, G10 can come in a bunch of different colors. See what I'm saying? Like I changed the color in this, but it was a, it was about the same color as this when I first got it. I actually dyed that, but G10 comes in a bunch of different colors. Um, carbon fiber does now, but it's an additive. You can basically just dye G10 to whatever color you want or use the, use the dye in the resin and then you come up with this color pattern. So this one's a two, a two tone on this uh, Beyond EDC Geo that uh, bladed ginger designed. Uh, but yeah, it, there, it's really nice, especially if it's textured well. It, it, it has a tendency though to tear up pockets pretty badly. If you're not careful, it will tear up pockets pretty badly. So the last of the ones are these ones that Cold Steel uses. This is something that they call, I forget what they were calling. I think it was Grivery, the handles on this. And then they renamed it to something else. But basically, it's just a polymer handle. It's a, uh, what do you want to call it? It's, it's a, I, I can't remember what they call it, where they, it's pressed into a, uh, the, the, the materials are pushed in and then they, the, into this, the, the, the hot mold. And so it's just a molded material. So they, they squirt the material in and then they hot mold it. And then they, you've got this uh, polymer resin that is, is very, very strong, really, really strong. Um, a lot of times a knife like this, this is the same material. So a lot of times knives like this, if they're in a lot of other materials, um, 
you'd be able to like crush this down. You can't even make that move. So this is one, another one of those polymer handled knives. You, there's nothing you can do this. These things are almost indestructible. Uh, I've seen videos of Lynn Thompson driving over this specific knife with a car uh, and doing stuff like that with these. The, the polymers that they used in these are incredible. And as a matter of fact, Cold Steel actually makes other things with that polymer. Um, they make these unbreakable baseball bats. Um, they make these unbreakable baseball bats that's made out of the same material as those handles. And they are just completely indestructible. So it's a really good material and it's, it's another one of those ones that's completely oil impregnable. You don't have to worry about if you get oil on it, the, the material's gonna break down, um, things like that. And then, oh, here's another one. The nice thing about that too is the, because this is molded material, they can put a pattern on it however they want. Like this has that, it's basically looks like windmill design on this, which is, is actually really good and grippy. Um, so I dig it, but yeah, you, you, uh, you can do that with these, uh, what do they call Injection molded. It's injection, it's hot injection molded uh, polymer that they, they just basically squirt into the, into the mold and then it cools. So the, it, it allows you some latitude. And then while I like the next ones, it's, it's your metals. Um, metal handles, well, wood, you know, we have some wood handle knives, so we, we don't have to, and there's natural materials that you can do and, and things like that. But these, these are off, these aren't the norm. Like this is a full custom with mother of pearl handles, but those aren't the norm. Uh, the norm is these materials and then metals. And I had forgotten how much I liked aluminum as a handle material until I got this, this Microtech in and I forgot how much I liked aluminum handles. Not only are they really attractive, super, super light, they are nice and resilient one of the better handle materials, the, the cold, they're the uh, hard coat anno that they put on these on all aluminum is really, really good. It's actually an aluminum oxide that then they dye whatever color. You can get all kinds of really brilliant colors on aluminum, or you can just do the, the matte black thing here. But the thing about aluminum with a hard coat on it is it holds up really, really well because the aluminum oxide coating on the top that forms when they do the anodizing on this, uh, it absolutely is harder, not just harder than the underlying aluminum, but harder than a lot of the steels that the blades are made out of because aluminum oxide is what we've used for sharpening for years and years and years and years in sharpening stones. So basically what you formed is a coating on the outside of that aluminum handle that is harder than the actual blade that's in your knife. So they do hold up really well, unless you drop them. Like I dropped this one the other day. Can you see there's a spot? I, I gotta find it. There's a spot up here where I dropped it and it didn't chip it, but it definitely has got, yeah, right in here. You can see where it's not as resilient. And then I, the same thing down here when it bounced around. You can scuff it off, but typically what has happened is you've removed the aluminum underneath and the coating went with it because I dropped this on concrete because um, I'm a dummy. Uh, but the the next, like you can get knives that are steel, but typically what you get, you get aluminum or you get titanium. And the nice thing about titanium is you can do a lot of different finishes with it because of just of its, its unique properties. And a lot of people think that when they think titanium, like you can see like here, I anodized this one. The electro anodizing allows you to do some colors and things like that. You can do some really unique finishes on knives. But the other thing that you can do with, with titanium that's really cool is you can do an orange peel. Be and, and I'm gonna tell you how it works. Like I was explaining this to somebody else. So titanium that you get in knives is not just pure titanium. It's, it's what they call AL4V titanium and that's aluminum and vanadium all combined into an alloy of titanium. And that's typically what gets used for making knife handles. And the, the reason that you do that is because regular titanium galls really badly 
it's it's a lot softer than Al4V titanium. It's a better alloy. But one of the unique things about Al4V titanium is this orange peel finish that you do. And you can accomplish this by doing it with a, with a, an, a, an iron, or I'm sorry, a wire wheel or a scotch bright wheel. And basically what you do is you really lightly touch this to that abrasive wheel. And when you do it, what happens is the vanadium that's in the alloy kind of clumps up. And that's what leaves you with this kind of unique finish. And it's so scratch resistant it gets such scratch resistance with an orange peel. I don't know if you guys have ever had something that was orange peeled. Much less likely to scratch than regular titanium. And that's because, the, then, the, well, then, not regular titanium, but un-orange peeled titanium. And it's because the vanadium that is now at the surface in these little clumps has now allowed you a much harder surface than the rest of the underlying titanium that prevent scratching. This gets carried a lot and I don't have any snail trails to speak of on this. Um, I'm really, I'm really preferential to when I do, when I get a knife, if it's got something fancy, if it's got like a big pocket clip like this, I'm very likely to orange peel my pocket clip because this gets carried a lot and has very few scratches on that pocket clip. It's not just an aesthetic thing it absolutely prevents that pocket clip from getting scratched. Um, it prevents that pocket clip from getting scratched anywhere near as badly. Plus then you can do a pop of color on it. It always looks good and you get some, some refractivity off of that. But the metals that you typically see are those two, the titanium and the aluminum. And the nice thing is, like I said, you can then, if you've got the means, you can just electro anodize your knife and you can refinish your knife multiple times. That's the nice thing about titanium. You can do so many things with it so many times before you start screwing something up with the uh, fit up of the knife. Like if you're constantly blasting something and stuff like that, yeah, probably you're, you're going you're gonna to start running into problems after a while of doing that. But if you're just simply like re-anodizing stuff and only doing exterior things and doing minimal things, you can re-anodize stuff like unlimited number of times, especially if it's just something like a pocket clip. You can go through the gambit of different colors. Um, de depending on the surface finish of the titanium, you'll get a different color at the same voltage. Um, when you start doing some of the polish stuff, you get some of these iridescent colors at the higher voltage when you, when you polish something really well. Like I did the backspacer on this, so it's kind of an iridescent, you know, it's, it's different colors at different angles and stuff like that, almost like an oil slick. Um, that's fine. I'm not going to be on here too much longer because I'm tired and I have to go to bed. Like, I've got stuff I got to do before, uh, before I go to work tonight, and then I got to work tomorrow. I'm off Monday, but there will be a video going up tomorrow. But I just kind of wanted to do that. Uh, there's a lot of other knife materials that you can get into. Like, there's woods and things like that. I really don't have a wood-handled knife to speak of here right now because the one that I carry all the time that was a gift from Zachary Schmidt is over at Scab's house. But this is this is some of your more exotic handle material. Like this is a mother of pearl or ab I'm not, I can't remember. I think this is just a straight up mother of pearl handle on this, uh, on this full custom with liners. And so you can get, you can get into some exotic materials. You can definitely get into some weird and unique things that are really attractive. But as far as functionality, this is way down on my list of things that I would carry or want to have for a knife that I'm carrying as a functional thing. This, this is more of something that was a gift. It's a full custom. I absolutely love it. It won't ever go anywhere. As a matter of fact, I gave this to my daughter. She just doesn't ever do anything with it because, well, she's a high school girl, so she really doesn't have much need for this, but this is hers. And so I just get the advantage of saying it's hers and then I get to keep it. But the, these, yeah, the, like you can get into some really unique and exotic materials. I have, I have a knife that I'm gonna make and I have a swordfish bill that I'm gonna make a handle out of swordfish bill after I stabilize it and things like that. Yeah. Bladed Ginger, yeah. I mean, like I said, guys, if you want to support Bladed Ginger, go pick one of these up. You can get it for 40% off 
with my coupon code crazy sharp, all one word over at beyond EDC, you can pick one of these up and it is a really, really good knife. I like this knife. It's a really good functional design, fits your hand really well. And the handles are really attractive. So, and they are sharp, but yeah, nice and nice thin behind the edge profile on that. So guys, just a quick live feed. Um, I'm really, really tired. Uh, I'm really, really tired working, working graveyards has been taxing. So uh, if you haven't dropped a like already, I'd really appreciate it. If you guys want to drop a super chat on your way out, you can do that if you don't, but make sure that you guys are taking my Amazon store and link down below that's in the descriptions of my videos, pin it to your browser and use it for all your shopping. So guys, that's it. I just wanted to do this real quick because I feel as though I've been neglecting you guys, but there will be a video going up tomorrow. So make sure you check that out and watch it. Uh, so I'll see you guys later. And uh, if it's your birthday, happy birthday.